Good evening, everyone. I'd like to call the uh, call the meeting to order here at uh, 7 p.m.
So can is right if you table it, it's got to come back for both and Okay, then what should I be saying? Well, you could. Because other things have been tabled and they have not come back later on. <laughs> Okay. I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm saying that I don't. Okay. Well, I would like to not vote on this at this time in this meeting this evening. Well, you could vote no. And if there is a majority of no, then it could come back and it could Yeah. Let me ask you, do you have the bill? Uh, yes. All right, I have not seen that. So oh, I imagine. It wasn't it provided to us in email? Well, I'm, all I'm saying is it was never sent to me. So, you know, if I assume that it's fairly ideal. It's as itemized as an insulin blink bill, which is why I continue to vote no on insulin blink bills. I would like the entire board to be here to vote on this and to discuss anything to do with this law firm. Motion by Rich. We have a second. I second. Second by Allison. Oh, we need the first motion. Well,
tonight, Mr. Quigley, I'm concerned. I am officially requesting that the removal of Anza Blake as legal, legal counsel for the district be placed on the agenda for the next meeting of the Schiller Park Board of Education, District 81. In February, the stakeholders in this community presented a petition asking the board to remove Anza Blake and seek new legal representation. Anza Blaine clearly came here with a major conflict of interest. And Ms. Gatchewski, you made the motion for this action. Since then, they preview agendas, prepare for meetings, review every action taken or pending, yet will not justify various charges when questioned by the board. They attempt to control FOIA requests when the district has trained FOIA officers. If a responsibility is overseen at such a cost, it should be done correctly, without delay, and according to legal standards. Their representative, Carrie Lynn Kraft Heffer, called the police in February with a false complaint against this community, accusing all the parents, teachers, and children of illegal activity. Why has there been no action on the petitions that were submitted to remove the law from Ansel? With legal overseeing of all actions taken or pending, you attempted to manipulate a bidding process to favor your personal interest. Mr. Stachura, why did you, as president, set up a meeting with Greg Zito of Red Speed, Illinois, at their location in Lombard in September as a proposed vendor that was not on the list of request proposal list for the official bid process for bus cameras? The legal bills combined have now exceeded any normal amount. In March alone, there was approximately $3,000 in just charges for phone calls between the president and vice president and the law firm. At $200 an hour, Ms. Gatchewski and Ms. Kasopoulos, you should have checked your notes before the meeting to remember what those calls were about. Three law firms appear on the agenda this evening. Anzo Blink. Stichur, Gashevsky, recommended and approved. Sariano and Harms, Patricia McCampbell, special counsel. And Colbert, Passarelli, Chavez, investigation. I was told at a special meeting in April that there would be, not be a bill until the investigation's over. I will be listening this evening for this information tonight. Still. Abstaining from a vote for budget approval is a non-vote. The only money-saving opportunity for this board was the elimination of positions in May that was voted down because Ms. Gashevsky's son was on that list. You have cost this district more money. Mr. Spectura, why did you send a letter to the local people in places newspaper falsely claiming that you have saved the district money? 
The FOIA requests that I have made, inappropriate extensions and requests for review for responses, have limited my knowledge of the governance of this board. Public partition was officially limited, li limited at the May meeting without a first or second reading of this new school board policy. The public participation questions on the district webpage are not accurate to the questions or concerns of those questioning. March was totally excluded. This is intentional non-disclosure. Video is not an official record for OMA. Mr. Stichur, why did you send a letter to the local people and places newspaper falsely claiming that you have increased transparency in this district? Research data shows that parental involvement in school increases the statistics of success for students. Mr. Stichura, why do you continue to discourage parent volunteer participation in this district? Research data also shows that quality educators are an important aspect of a quality school. This district has always supported the development of quality personnel to assure success for the students of the district. School board. Why do you continue to accept resignations of quality educators and other supporting personnel throughout the district? Three of you here campaigned as the top four candidates for District 81, supported with photographic images and a web page. You held a fundraiser attended by Mr. McCampbell, Mr. Chavez, and Mr. Gashevsky. There were yard signs and campaign materials sent out to the community. I look for information for this political group. I see CCDP, Catherine, Carl, David, Patricia listed. Why is there not a listing for top four candidates for District 81 on the Illinois State Board of Education website? Mr. Satcher and Mr. Gashevsky, as board members, you have not adhered to the oath that you took when seated on this board. Through your actions, you have not shown that you are protectors of this district's assets. You have not shown that to be fiscally responsible. You are not making decisions in the best interest of this district or these students. You are not open or honest. Mr. Spechter and Mr. Gashevsky, you should remove yourself from this board. Remove yourself from this place. At the very least, the board should consider an official censure for you for your malicious actions as representatives of this district. It's evident that you are not sitting here to advance our district. You are set on destruction. Your representation is an embarrassment and, an, as, and is offensive to this community. To reiterate, I am officially requesting that the removal of Ansel Blink as legal, legal counsel for the district be placed on the agenda for the next meeting of the Schiller Park Board of Education District 81. And questions for the board. Why is there no action on the petitions that were submitted to remove the law firm Ansel Blink? Number two, Mr. Stichur, why did you as president set up a meeting with Greg Zito of Red Speed, Illinois at their location in Lombard in September as a proposed vendor that was not on the request for proposal list for the official bid process for bus vendors? Mr. Stichur, why did you send a letter to the local public and people in places newspaper falsely claiming that you have saved this district money? Mr. Stichura, why did you send a letter to the local people in places newspaper falsely claiming that you have increased transparency in this district? Mr. Stichura, why do you continue to discourage parent vol volunteer participation in this district? Mr. Stichura, Ms. Elania, Ms. Kowalski, why is there not a list of your top four candidates for District 81 on the Illinois State Board of Education website? School board, why do you continue to accept the resignations of qualified education aiders? and support personnel throughout this district. Diana Caffaro, resident of School District 81, Shiller Park. Thank you, Mr. Caffaro.
going through some financial strain and requiring me to pay in advance and wait for the reimbursement was going to be difficult for me and my family. So I called Dr. Gorchewski and I explained my situation to her and she told me about requirements for reimbursement and she told me, but then she did something more. She listened as a leader who cares for her teachers and the education of the students in Mr. So she got permission to pay for them the last two classes in advance. She did this because she knew that this would not only benefit me, but it would benefit my students and the students of Shirley. So she took it. <clears throat> Having the district pay for my classes prior relieved a huge financial burden. And it was one that showed human compassion. But she also knew that in the end, it would benefit the ch children of Schiller Park and the success of District Region 1. And I recently just learned that we have exited a huge population of ESL students from our children. So that's a win for me, a win for you, and a win for us. Thank you, Dr. Korczewski, for continuing to lead District 81 with integrity and compassion. Your endless hard work is an inspiration to me, to my fellow colleagues, the board, and most importantly, the family especially. when I had the honor to be placed as a student teacher with Ms. Diane Surgis. The lessons I learned from working with her served me well even today. Ms. Surgis always put children first and made her decisions based on what was best for children. She was a champion for keeping students in their home school and worked to provide programs to meet their individual needs. The dream was furthered under the leadership of Dr. Roberta Taylor. Dr. Taylor always put children first and made her decisions based on what was best for students. Dr. Borshevsky puts children first and makes her decisions based on what is best for children. So it is no surprise that under her leadership, the dream was realized and we created special education programs for children for whom we could provide better education within the district. Her vision created classrooms with programs tailored to the students' ex exceptionalities and this indeed takes a village, and Dr. Borshevsky assembled an incredible team of educators and professionals of the highest caliber, but this did not happen overnight. While serving as a special education teacher these past five years, I have worked with three different special education directors. Our special education team was adrift. When Ms. Kim Klein joined the special education team as our leader, I felt as though we finally had someone to steer the boat. She has vision, she has knowledge, she has heart, and most important, she puts children first and makes her decisions based on what's best for students. So it was with great sadness that I received the news of her resignation. Perhaps to some, it may seem like no big deal, but to the students with special needs and the adults who work with them, the loss of this time is devastating. As evidenced by our past history with special education directors, good directors are rare, and letting this gem slip through our fingers is a shame. Today, before the board, there are five resignations, and with these five resignations, our district is losing 34 years of experience. One nationally board-certified teacher, two practitioners with specialist certifications, three school psychologists, four individuals who work diligently daily with the students across the district, and five brilliant educators who always put children first. For many years, our district was a training ground for educators. Teachers would come here, they would work for a couple of years, gain experience, and then move on to other districts. 
sometimes as many as 20 or more a year. In recent times, this trend slowed almost to a standstill. Now, in the past 12 months, we have lost numerous excellent professionals. It is my best hope that this board is concerned about this as I am. Children need consistency, and inconsistency in staff negatively impacts student achievement and growth. It is in the best interest of all the stakeholders in the district, and especially you, the Board of Education, to always make decisions based on what is best for children and to always put them first. Thank you. this but uh, I just recently became a board, mem board member representative for my school and um, we were sitting there talking and I came to the realization that three of the teachers resigning have really made a huge impact on me and I'm not going to get emotional but um, I wanted to personally I know that only one of them is sitting here right now and the other one is in the band room and the other one is home but I wanted to honestly express to them how much they meant to me and that I'm very, very devastated that they're leaving. Um, first, I wanted to say, Kim Klein is in this room and she's probably met me three or four times in her life, but I saw her at three IEP meetings in the past two months and um, she complimented me and told me that she loved having me on the staff at District 81. And, um, she doesn't know this, but that meant so much to me because I have been traveling a lot to get a job and I finally found somewhere that I'm very happy with. And um, Jamie Bolognomi, I'm saying that wrong, I know, but Jamie B came up to me and said, Kim Klein was talking all about you and how great and positive you are. And that meant so much to me and I personally wanted to thank her. And I'm so sad that I did not get to work with her because I really think she's done wonders. And just sitting in that IEP meeting, those are long, and it's a lot, and it's overwhelming, but she had such a smile on her face, and I really appreciate, um, I really, really appreciate her a lot. Uh, Jamie B is uh, a school psychologist, and uh, I've been at Kennedy for two years, and I've had some of the hardest kids that I've ever dealt with in my four years of teaching. Um, Jamie met with me, I remember the first day my student came, she came in the middle of the year. Uh, she didn't know her ABCs, she didn't know her last name, and she was in third grade. Uh, I was crying, she hugged me at 7.30 in the morning and told me everything was gonna be fine. And um, that student has an IEP now, she is at Washington School, and I saw her just the other day, and she cried when she saw me. So, I'm so upset that Jamie is leaving, and I am so, so, um, I can't even think of the word. I'm just bummed, I guess, to say that I couldn't finish out my career with her. Uh, last but not least was Molly Catero. Uh, she was a third grade teacher with me last year. I came in as a maternity sub, scared to death. Um, Melissa told me I could do it, and um, I was nervous, but I ended up teaching the whole year. I got asked in January to stay in that classroom, and I will never forget that day when Melissa told me that. And um, Molly was a complete role model. She's positive, she's caring. She inspires me to go out of the box. She plays guitars, and I love guitars. And she just does everything fun, and I never knew how fun fun teaching could be until I worked with her. And knowing that she is not at my school anymore just as I got a full-time job makes me so sad as well. But what the most important thing is that it's teachers like these that have made me who I am today. And I will never forget them. And it honestly breaks my heart to see them leave. But I know that each and every one of them has taught me and they will continue to guide me in my heart and every day I teach. Thank you so much.
and Jeremy Argus, 3733 Scott. Um, I just want to take a moment of your time to reiterate some things some people have said, and uh, with a heavy heart, I'm going to read one of the resignations that was submitted. Dear Dr. Krzyzewski, I am writing to notify you that I am resigning from my position as Director of Special Education. It is with a very heavy heart that I make this decision, as I have worked in a district that is so in tune to the needs of students in special education. I know I had to work with you, a superintendent that actually knew the names of students in special education. After our first interaction, in a different political climate under a different school board, I can only imagine the things we could have accomplished for our students, staff, and families in Shiloh Park. I have worked in special education for 17 years. During this time, I have worked with both gracious and challenging families. I have been prepped to testify in a due process hearing as a speech language pathologist. I was never under the impression that District 81 would be any different. There are always going to be parents that do not agree with the school district. This is why the procedural, procedural safeguards, including due process, are in place for families of students in special education. However, I was unprepared to work in a district in which there was no school board support of its administration, that some members of the school board even encouraged bullying behavior of administration and staff. To this very moment, I can't understand that a community chooses to tear its school, down, school district down rather than support it. I love the people that I get to work with every day, from our family in the district office to all of the staff members in the buildings. This administrative team has worked endlessly with me to continue the growth of the SLC and SLBC and create a true continuum of services for students in preschool through eighth grade. I have formed a wonderful relationship with each and every special education staff member. Their internal desire to do what's best for kids, coupled with my experience in leadership, we have accomplished amazing things in just two years. Dr. Roszewski, I appreciate the opportunities I have been given during my time with District 81, as well as your professional guidance and support. Thank you for taking a leap of faith and hiring me and allowing me to grow your special education program. This was just one of 12 resignations that have been turned in this, this year. Three school, three school psychologists, a speech and language pathologist, a sixth grade science teacher, an occupational therapist, three teachers at Kennedy, and a sixth and seventh grade special education teacher. Five of them resigned this month alone. I'm not going to stand here and point fingers and place blame. The time for that is over. However, what it is time for is repairing our district, putting the arguments aside, and start working for the kids. It's time to figure out why we are losing these quality teachers and staff and stop it from continuing further. We are losing exceptional people and educators, and it can't be allowed to continue. On another note, some people in this community and on this board think the people that stand up here and speak are just puppets doing the bidding of others. But let me introduce you to a few of the reasons why I stand here and speak. You guys want to come up? Okay. Kids? Everybody up. All you guys, come on.
two board members do here today and every other day helps to form that future through these children and their teachers. Please help them be successful as we know they can be. As successful as we know they can be. Someone has to do something to stop the current direction School District 81 is heading. And the seven people that already accepted that role are sitting right here in front of us all. Please do the right thing. Find out why people are leaving and do your best to stop it from continuing. I'm asking you to please don't help it along. Help to stop the bullying of our staff from outside parties. Protect our teachers and assets. Our, protect our teachers and assist them in continuing to develop what is one of the best school districts around. Don't do it for your sake or mine, do it for theirs. Thank you very much. We have some very dedicated, um, we have some very dedicated parents who help with the booster clubs. Some are here tonight, yep. and I know they would be extremely upset if the booster clubs no longer existed. Not only would they be upset, but the community too. 
because I know there are many people in the community who look forward to the pancake breakfast since we're getting dinner. I'll have to, would I, am I going to have to inform the public that we're not going to have these anymore? Now that would be a shame. So too many people don't want the hassle of dealing with elected officials and would sooner walk away from volunteering than rather than push back. But I am the other I am the other I'm not that person. I'll defend our clubs to the nail in order not to lose any of our volunteers. So just tell me what it is you want. What don't you like about current involvement within our schools? I don't, these are not open-ended questions either. I do expect these answers from. disband the parent groups. That is not my intent at all. I'm trying to seek understanding about what parent groups we have. You know, so why, why is it now that... No, I, I, I really don't understand what that goes that right term. there and shows that you're not about them. Show I'm up. sorry? That, that proves right there that you're not about them. Show up to our stuff. If you, you don't know, I'm concerned the about your use of the term disband if you the parent not groups, know and that's not true. <laughs> that are in this school district, that shame on you. You are a board member. You should know every I'm scared of information. information that is in this district. Yes. And get involved. Yes. yes. I said, how well have you been on the board that you don't know where it is? And you don't know no, it was a question of not knowing what they were, um, down. it was a question of asking how they were organized. That's what I was trying to discern. And what did they work? What is the issue? Yeah. Right. I just wanted to see how you were organized. Why? Because I'm not the court. Why don't you address the board, the the, the, the the parents that are in the organization? Then? Why didn't we discuss you have questions this? about our parent organizations? And why don't you come to our meetings? Yeah. Why didn't you come to the board and ask us? Since two of us have been in booster clubs, we could have explained it to you. Been in booster clubs. Then representing it as the board is requesting this. No, the board is not requesting. Well, that's how it goes. See, that's against the rules. Uh, Dr. Borshevsky, did the board request the information? No, we did not. No, and in fact, the, these emails between you and I were FOIA. And that's how this information went to the parent groups. Okay. Before there's any accusations made, these emails were FOIA, and they read the emails between you and I about requests for information. And that's what it was. Okay. Declare, we can back in the board meeting now. The president of the school board is also a member of the Music Boosters program. If you came to one of our meetings, you would be welcome with open arms. Thank you. Uh, principal report and enrollment reports. Any questions or comments? to say that I think that I was I was very proud when I read in the principal reports that um, out of the 36 students that were top 10% in district 212 that was it 13 13 of those students were our alumni so I just want to say that Examples of excellence.
again, I would like to say what a privilege it is to be here with me tonight. We have um, a very special gift to share with you tonight. Okay? These are some very special third graders that I've had the privilege of teaching this year. And um, a couple years ago, I got a grant from an organization called Little Kids Rap, and they fund teachers, either music teachers or classroom teachers, to get guitars in their classroom if they're so inclined to teach music to them. So I've, I've loved every second of doing it in my classroom. I've got embedded in my curriculum and teach some cool songs that they love and um, talk about author's message and figurative language and all that, kind of, all those kinds of things with the music. Um, we look at music as a gift in our classroom. And so today, if this really is a gift for us to share with you. And we hope that this is the best day of your life. <laughs> so, third graders, are you ready to rock? Ready to roll! Are you ready to rock? Ready to
the wild space. They're going to go out there and have some ice cream. So thank you for bringing them tonight. We really appreciate that. Very thank you. Thank you. Can I just take a moment to say that that is the reason I'm on school board? Yeah. Old business. Information number one, finance committee update. meet the needs of a rising population of ELL learners. So that was the first reason. 
The second reason was, um, or the second, you know, factor into that decision is this is something that was done many, many years ago under the um, direction of the previous administration when teachers were asked to go back and get their reading endorsements. So this was a practice that was in place years back. I went to the board president in January of 2012. I approached this topic with her. She said to go ahead and, and move forward. We memoed the teachers. The board has a copy of that memo and the email I sent today. So this is something we've been doing since January of 2012. When the state came out, we had our compliance visit. One of the highlights of that visit was the number of teachers that have their ELL endorsement. They were very impressed with the fact that we had so many teachers that were endorsed and that our students were getting the support from ELL teachers throughout their school day, not just in a pull-out model. Most of them were in classrooms with teachers with ELL endorsements. So that was always the rationale behind this. The contract states that teachers receive, I believe, full reimbursement up to $100 a credit hour. The classes at the IRC were really close to that, so that's why we chose to partner with the IRC for this model. And again, if, if it's the board desire, if it's the board's desire that we stop this practice, you just need to provide me that direction and we'll do that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 100% or 50? 50% for classes that are $100 a credit hour. Right. Okay. So you just said 100%. I'm sorry, okay. I misspoke. 50 well, that's where <coughs> My, I, I'm just trying to wrap my mind around this. I don't well, understand why we're not only paying in advance when the contract stage. Yeah, you're talking to the microphone. I can't hear what you're saying. Sure. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Um, the contract states that the board shall pay half of tuition costs up to a maximum reimbursement of two thousand dollars with a minimum base of $100 per credit hour per year for coursework. Right, I'm fully aware what the contract states, Pat. I have emailed you in February of 2013, you asked this question. In April of 2013, you asked this question. In June of 2013, you asked this question. I've asked several times. I'll in August of 2013, you asked this question. But she doesn't remember. In October of 2013, I answered this question. In March of 2014, I answered this question. In April of 2014, I answered this question. And I answered it again last week. If it's the board's desire that we discontinue this practice, I just need that direction because it has not been an issue in the past based on the significant need that we have, the high population of ELL learners, and wanting our teachers to go back to school and get those strategies necessary to meet their needs. I appreciate their desire to do that. We may have teachers that would want to go back to school for a different endorsement, but they've agreed to step up and say, absolutely, Dr. Borchewski, I will go back and get my ELL endorsement to better meet the needs of the students in District 81 but there are cases where they can't afford to pay that tuition. So it would deter them from going back to school to earn that endorsement. Please be reminded that all of this is paid with our set aside money from Title I, which I think Ms. Grant did an excellent job of explaining to you during her grant presentation. We have to set aside money for professional development. So we use that set aside money to pay this tuition. It's our grant money. Then why do we have this in the contract? The contract was this time. This, this is the contract language for all other tuition reimbursement. If a teacher should decide to go back to school for something other than ELL, then we are following the language of the contract. The only reason that this is different is because this was a request of the district. This was a need of the district. So we went to our professionals and said, we need this. Kim, in the history of this practice, has there ever been anyone that has had to pay back any of the tuition due to not meeting the requirements of the 50%? No, our teachers are pretty smart. They always get A's. Occasionally they get A's. <laughs> So are you saying that this document that you included in your response that has as the titles within it, ELL certification, tuition reimbursement, and adaptive PE certification, adaptive PE reimbursement? As I stated in this, that's a memo of understanding? Well, this is just a memo of understanding for you because this is the only way for me to explain it to you in the best way I possible. So it's not the legal document that my No, I never asked the lawyer about this. I never asked the lawyer about this. No, I did not. 
Would you like me to get feedback from the lawyer on this? More money. Yeah, More money. Yes, wow. Pat. And there's a need for the district to get our teachers to go back to school and get this endorsement. The contract is being followed in every other area of tuition reimbursement outside of these two things listed here because these two things were needs. As I explained in this document that I sent to you, I think in March, adaptive PE was another request the district made when we started bringing kids back from those outplacements. We did not require, correct? Right. I asked because what was happening at that time is kids were going to Easter Seals. We were busing kids to Easter Seals for adaptive PE-like activities. So the idea behind this was if we can get our PE teachers to go back to school and get this endorsement, then we wouldn't have to bus our kids to Easter Seals and we could provide adaptive PE on site in District 81 with their typical peers. So that's another, that's another situation where, yes, we're paying the full amount because the district, there was a need, and the district asked them to go back and get that endorsement. But when a teacher file submits for tuition reimbursement or degree approval for anything outside of these two areas, we do follow the param that contract language, the parameters in the contract. I think in the document that you sent to all the board where you identified all the teachers and how much they got, and I thought there were people on the second page of that, that some got half reimbursed and some got 100% reimbursed, and those were not the ELL teachers. Did I misunderstand that? Which, which time? Are you talking about the most recent one? Because I sent you the reimbursement several times. Can you give me the data back? sent it to, uh, this was the second time I believe. The one with the table, the PDF? Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. This one? This one? Uh, no, the one that was just sent. Well, mine was in color. I think that was the most current one, yeah. All right, so on the second page of the app, your second page will be the same as my second page, right? Yeah. So on the second page of the app, are there people that are getting full reimbursement and others that are getting half? What does it say at the top? This is uh, tuition <coughs> reimbursement, all others. So this is inclusion, uh, starts with uh, Lisa, Lisa Laser. It's okay. the third page of this page, right? Because you have ESL, the first right. page, so, so ESL the ones, the second page. So the ones on there that right. are, the ones on there that are getting full and not half. Those are the teachers that um, are going back to school for adaptive PE. And, but all the others you'll notice are being reimbursed half unless I, it's an administrator. Because I do see an administrator on here. Um, and that that was for their contract. The only time there's full reimbursement is in these two occasions. Well, please understand this is not a, a criticism, it's a question. Mm -hmm. Why are we not following the contract? That's what I was trying to get to, mm -hmm. and I thought it would be beneficial for us to discuss it as a board rather than to exchange emails about this because we aren't getting the conversation going about it. Mm -hmm. And it seems to me that if we have a contract, we should be abiding by the contract to the left mm -hmm. and not make the exceptions unless that's your responsibility to you want to be held accountable for not following the contract. I don't I wouldn't feel comfortable doing it unless the board approved it. The board did approve it. The board president and I had a conversation in January of 2012, and as a representative of the board, she said, she said just the board president. Right. So what I'm saying is the board as a whole did not approve that. No. No, the board president and I had a conversation, and it's clearly outlined here, and then there's been many opportunities in, in the several emails that I've sent. I mean, we could, but it's not to be put on the agenda, I think, and 
and I That's appreciate fine. you doing that. Thank you. And I mean, if you want, we can add it as an action item next month if you want to vote on it. We've never voted on this in the past. We certainly can. I think I think I've done my due diligence in, in this communication to you to try to help you understand this and explain it. And you know, if I haven't, I, I don't know what else I can do, but I'm willing to. Well, I think we just needed to discuss it. Before. Okay. And then take action on it would probably be a good idea. <laughs> Legally, should we not be doing well, that? Or? Right. As, as the board has, has mentioned on a number of occasions, a single board member, even the president, cannot speak for the board. So, yes, the board should do that. The oh. Amen. Or, or, um, I mean, we, we could we could certainly work with the SBA to yeah. enter, you know, develop an MOE if, if that's right. what we need MOU. to do. MOU yeah. if that's what we need to do. I mean, best. and I'm sure that SIA legal counsel could draft something for us. Um, is would that make you feel more comfortable, or do you want to bring this to a vote? What? makes me uncomfortable is having a contract that says one thing and having a, a, a behavior that says something entirely different. I understand. And so we just need to fix it to make it seem feel I don't want to be understanding. I don't want to be understanding. Would it be voted by the board? Yes. I still want to reiterate that I brought this, this is a conversation I started having with the board in February of 2013, and I was never told to change the practice or get an MOU in place until tonight. I don't think it was on the agenda before. I have never been asked to add it to the agenda. I don't, the board president and the board and I craft the agenda. This was the first time I've been asked to add this to the agenda. Thank you for doing that. In order to be ELL compliant, you have to have a certain percentage of teachers. Right. And we have to make sure that our students are being served with teachers who have ELL. So it's kind of as an indirect requirement. Right. I mean, we, in order to be in compliance, we have to make sure that our ELL students are being taught with teachers who have this ELL endorsement. So I'm clear. What is the direction? We're not taking action. No, I, I know. Going forward, what is the direction? What would you like me to do? I think it's what was in that way to go. Put it on the agenda. Something that's required. So if you want another old business action for next month. I believe so. Okay. Action. New board policy, second reading. I would like to entertain a motion that the Board of Education approve the District 81 Drug and Alcohol Policy and Procedure as presented. I move. I'll second. Okay. Any questions? Mr. Turner? Yes. Downs? Yes. Motion passed. New business, strategic planning. Mr. Cohen, would you come up, please? Sure. Evening, Jeff. Mr. Chair, how are you? Good to see you. Or the great. Thank you. Superintendent had asked me to put together a very brief presentation. Um, I think that you all 
have a copy of the slides, and she told me that I had 10 minutes, so you know that it's hard for me just to talk for 10 minutes. <laughs> so this is going to be difficult. Um, but I just put together a few slides just to talk about goal setting. And I've set an audience for the entire meeting tonight, so I think that this is the most appropriate topic that you ought to be considering as a team right now. Um, because in my work with boards uh, over the years, uh, the many years that I've done this work, sometimes boards just get off uh, point. And, it, and, and, and when they do that, as you saw with children, it's very easy to get back on point. Because children can do that for you very easily. Children can do that for you. Because most boards that I work with, most board members serve for children. And when boards get off a point from focusing on children, they just need to come back and huddle and find that common unity of purpose in which they have come together. Because the one thing that is certain is that no one can make you individually do anything on this board as an elected official. And good governance is an individual choice. It is a choice that each of you all make individually. And when you decide to come together and you find the common unity of purpose, boards can do anything. And so your stakeholders, I've heard a lot tonight in terms of the stakeholders, in terms of some of the things that they've expressed. And I really think in terms of the Shiller Park and the spirit that exists that I've seen in this community, that this board, that you all, all seven people, and I know that uh, Marion is not here, that you all can very easily, in going through a goal setting session, pull yourselves and find that unity of purpose that will cause you to satisfy your stakeholders. And because boards do have the responsibility of satisfying the stakeholders at the end of the day, and because they do pay the bills, and they give you their precious resource, which is their children. And so that's all that they expect, is a return of the investment of, of what they're giving you, and that is doing the best thing. So, uh, I said all that in two or five minutes. Uh, great school boards, uh, great school districts, great student achievement. This is in the proper order here, uh, because current research now tells us that um, that you cannot have great student achievement without having great school boards. Just can't have it. If boards are not great, then more than likely student achievement is going to be impacted. It's just a matter of time. Yeah. So the focus of this work that we're going to talk about very briefly is making the, getting the board on point first, then the school district will follow, and student achievement will be in order as well. So that's pretty much the theme of the goal setting. Um, in terms of a brief agenda, just a look at the government context that I'll give tonight is very brief. It's going to be on the eight characteristics of effective school boards. That is the research that the National School Board Association has been teaching boards now. And if you go to their conference, that is pretty much what they are actually using as a frame for what, for what board members uh, should be doing. I should go through those very quickly. Overview of the process um, and some key terms that you should consider in terms of the process. Uh, the pricing, the superintendent asked for pricing, and, and we can discuss the next steps. So, first of all, um, in terms of the frame, the frame that I use and that we use in terms of this conversation and why you should do it is based on the uh, review of the, uh, the eight characteristics of effective school boards that the Center for Public Education has actually uh, recently did, and recently is in 2011, that's really some of the most current research that we have on the behavior of school boards, and what they found is that there, uh, there is a consistent body of research examining the characteristics and practices of effective school boards. And in this research, they found that when they looked at uh, 28 school districts, they looked at nearly um, uh, 4 million students across the country, in this research, and they found school boards that were highly effective, and, the, and how they defined highly effective were districts that were considered to be 80, 80, 80 school districts. 80% meet and exceeds, 80% free and reduced lunch, and 80% property. And the reason why they use that population is because they factored out wealth, they factored out a lot of the reasons that, that you have high student achievement, and that's why they looked at that. And what they found in that research is that these boards and these high achieving districts had some characteristics that were different than boards of low achieving school districts. Very, very different behaviors. And those behaviors are, first of all, the boards committed to a vision of high expectations for student achievement. That was the first thing that they consistently did was they made that commitment to that vision. 
And that vision was a shared vision amongst the board. It wasn't the community that actually created this vision. This is the vision that the board actually created, and they shared that vision together. And they have a shared vision of quality instruction, and they define clear goals towards that vision. So the boards that were highly effective, they did this, this first characteristic, and they did it consistently. The second was they shared, uh, they had sh uh, shared strong beliefs and values. What are those beliefs and values that this community stands for? Uh, what are the beliefs and values that the school district stands for right now? Not what they stood for maybe five years ago, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, but what are those shared beliefs that the stakeholders really want you all as the board to uphold and to enforce for them? And that's what stakeholders do have input, is collecting what are the beliefs and what are the values about what is possible for the students and their ability to learn and of this system, this great school district, uh, to educate all children at high levels. What are those beliefs and values? And then the, uh, the third characteristics are that the boards were accountability driven. They spent less time on operational issues, the issues that the CEO is responsible for, and more time on policy. So some of the discussion that we had tonight, really some people would say that's a policy discussion, and how do we craft a policy that the CEO will be responsible for enforcing? All right, and that's, that's one of the things that they did, they were accountability driven. The fourth characteristic that they found, they have a collaborative, collaborative relationship with the staff and the community and establish a strong communication structure to inform and engage both internal and external stakeholders in setting and achieving district goals. That they had a collaborative relationship. So it wasn't contentious, it was collaborative. And I have to tell you that when I see contentious relationships, um, again, going back to the research, student achievement is impacted. And that is just plain and simple. You're going to look at school boards, but you have highly contentious systems, it ordinarily has an impact on student achievement. And number five, the fifth characteristic they found, they were data savvy, they embraced and monitored data, even when that information was negative, but they didn't use it as a, as a hammer, they used it to, um, to actually uh, encourage continuous improvement. So it wasn't our gotcha. We got you. This data is bad. Now we're going to get you. It wasn't. That's not what highly effective boards do. They use data to reinforce the direction and to modify and to course uh, changes of direction when necessary. The sixth characteristic is the uh, the aligned and sustained resources, such as professional development, to meet district goals. Board members are familiar. They know how their money is being spent and how it's going to be spent to accomplish these goals. And number seven, the board leads as a united team with the superintendent, each from their respective roles, the board from the governance role and the superintendent from the CEO role, managerial role, with strong collaboration and mutual trust. That was the other characteristic, and this is a big one here in the 21st century with education reform, with everything that's coming about school districts, this is the one that's most stressed amongst boards right now is number seven. Because there's a lot that's taking place right now. But effective boards found a way to do that one. And number eight, you take part in team development and training to build shared knowledge, values, and commitment uh, for their improvement efforts. So these are the eight characteristics that, that I use as the frame to sort of frame up the conversation of setting these goals and, and really focusing on number one and number two as a real foundation. So the process, Superintendent Esme, let's spend a little bit of time on the process. The process um, that, that I use in this is really to create the new reality. Uh oh. And the process is number one, the board has a session to affirm its mission and vision. The current mission and vision that you have, do you want to keep it? Because some boards that I work with, they say that we've recently done that work, we like our mission, we like our vision, we want to keep it. But only the board can make that decision. That's the board's first job responsibility in session one. And then the second uh, responsibility is to get on the same page, conduct a self-evaluation, or conduct some type of discussion where the board is 
pulling itself together and preparing itself to actually go through this process. I've done this process where boards did not do the self-evaluation or did not find a way to get on the same page and it creates more tension uh, before they go into the process. So it's a good idea for the board to get on the same page. And then you, in this process also you identify potential goal areas and also review your current plan if you have a strategic plan in place. And that's session one. All right, so the board is responsible for doing that. And session two, potentially, uh, if you invite focus groups into the session, um, you have focus group discussions, you identify questions that you would use in this that you would want to use from a goal setting um, um, a process, that you would use, these questions would be used in the SWAT discussion because we're really getting the group to really take them through a SWAT discussion. And SWAT is just stands for strength, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. And that's what you're going to take the, your focus groups through is, is through a SWAT discussion about the community and the things that, that we uh, believe are strong, the things that we believe are weak, the opportunities, and the things that are threats, and ascertain that information um, and using some anecdotal data and also some qualitative data that the superintendent and administration will provide. And then you would also, uh, this group would identify the goal areas in, in, in uh, session two. So that's first the board does its work, then they can invite the uh, focus groups into the session. And then after the focus group does work, then the board goes to session three. Uh, they answer the question, where are we in terms of the goal setting process? Uh, they define the clear, the current reality. The board is responsible for that in terms of listening to the focus group and making sure that the board determines what that current reality is. The board goes through a final SWAT process and then they make any adjustments to the goal areas. The board, after they've been identified, the board actually says, okay, these are the real goal areas that we're going to focus on. And then they hand it off to the district leadership team. That's what DLT stands for. And in session four, the superintendent takes what the board has clarified, and then the superintendent takes the goal areas and the goals, and they write the objective strategies and action plans. That is the responsibility of the CEO in administration is to actually draft that language. And then uh, from there, uh, the board, the administration presents that to the uh, board uh, in session five. The board does a review of the final plan, a discussion with the district leadership team, and then they can adopt the new plan at some point in time, uh, either in this session or in a future session. And that creates the new reality uh, for the district and also creates the new assumption. So that's the process uh, that, that I use as a five-step process. Now, um, the board owns the process. This nobody, superintendent doesn't own this process. The board, she owns, she creates, she owns the means. Superintendent owns the means of how it's going to be created once the board states how they want it to be done. But the board owns the process. And what I mean by that is that the board determines uh, what they want as an end product, what is a product that we want uh, in terms of this. Do we want to redo all, uh, all of our ends? Do we want to look at, redo the core values? Do we want to um, do the core beliefs? Redo the core beliefs? Do we want to, a new mission statement, a vision statement? And the board has to determine that first. Superintendent doesn't tell the board. The board says this is what we want. And they also determine a time frame in which they want it done. So they say we want these things and we want it done in the next 12 months. And the superintendent goes and then creates the means. The board also is responsible for determining who's going to be a part of this process. All right? Many boards are inviting their staff, uh, the community, their stakeholders, parent PTOs, in the broader community, government, and uh, families, even without students, uh, which is a large portion of the district, they're inviting them into the process. But the board needs to tell the superintendent who is going to be invited in this process. And sometimes it behooves the board to actually to start this work on their own and to prepare themselves to invite people into the work. Because I've done this work with boards that were not prepared to do this work with their stakeholders and it created even more division within a community. So the board sometimes may need to get themselves in a position to do the work with their stakeholders. And um, so that would be something you want to consider. And then um, the third process in terms of the board has to delegate as a board of determines the goal areas. 
And then the superintendent and administrative team uh, will actually create this, this strategy, create the strategic plan, and the board is responsible for adopting. So that's uh, just a, a, a graph that shows you the same thing that I said previously. But key thing from this one is the board determines what they want, when they want it, and they determine who's going to be involved in terms of the process. All right. And um, in terms of the cost, uh, for this work, um, some boards choose to do this and they do it as a, as a collective team in an evening. Uh, that is $500 to do this work in an evening to go through it, which is oftentimes kind of hard to do. And most boards choose to go with a Saturday, a four-day Saturday, uh, which is $900 to do a four-day Saturday. And that's starting at 8.30 and ending at about 3.30 in the afternoon on Saturday. All right, and so, um, this is what I always ask. I've gone a little bit over. So I'd like to know if you have any, what questions do you have about the process, uh, the people part of this, the product, and the price. If you have any questions, I will entertain those now. Well, uh, I mean, we've dealt with you. I'd, I'd be more than happy to have another position with Jeff Cole. I have a question about yeah. the uh, community survey. Yes. Who develops that survey, and how does it get distributed? Is that something that we would Board decides that? No, 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 actually the survey, that is the means that's delegated to the CEO, and the CEO would develop, come up with a couple of uh, samples of the evaluations, there's several that school communities, different school districts are using, and um, so she would present those as potential options for the board, and the board would make a decision as opposed to trying to create that, and spend the time to do that. There's several, uh, several instruments out there that, uh, that school districts are using. Uh, that, that, that you all can make a decision about which one you want to use. I know you're looking at I know because I can feel you, your energy coming in. <laughs> you have a question. <laughs> so is this like kind of just a little bit more extensive of what the board did, you know, when we did our first like a retreat, so this is kind of like more of an extensive version of that. Yes. And it's it's at Well, the question is, is that you all did this. That was really compressed, what we did that evening. That was very compressed. We did not do your, we didn't consider core values. We didn't con consider the beliefs, because I think you all kept those in place. And what you all wanted to do was really to speak some uh, go areas, focus areas, uh, to the superintendent very quickly. So that was extremely compressed, what we did. Um, and if you, so this process would be to invite some stakeholders actually into the actual process. All right, and so we would actually extend this a little bit. Do that. Oh, I do that. Okay. So it would be an extension of what we did and go a little bit deeper. All right? And maybe to consider some of the other ends and to uh, for the board maybe to to do a rewrite of those completely. So this would probably be more than just one standard. Yeah, I just gave you the. <laughs> It could be. It's in five sessions. Well, I don't know about five, but. <laughs> they like you, John. Okay. Oh, five sessions. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Any other questions? <coughs> Mr. Joe? No, I have much. Uh, good to see you, though. Good to see you all, and I uh, wish you well. And uh, thank you very much for the opportunity to come before you, board. And Mr. Chair, I appreciate it. And uh, Superintendent, thank you. Thank you, John. Thank well, you for being here. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> okay, number two. Pat Crafton. You look the president of the Metropolitan Math Club of Chicago. <coughs> Pat's here. Um, now, I don't know anything about the Metropolitan Math Club of Chicago, but I do know that Pat loves math. <laughs> um, so I would imagine this is a significant honor, especially for someone like Pat who loves math as much so as she does. There's over 450 um, members of the Metropolitan Math Club of Chicago that consists of teachers uh, in the greater Chicagoland area of six counties. Um, and so we happen to be the oldest um, affiliate of the National Council of Teachers of Mathematics. We are celebrating our 100th anniversary this year as an affiliate organization.
organization. And um, so, yes, it is a great honor. Um, it is uh, predominantly high school teachers. There are a lot of um, middle school teachers. And as president, I'm going to try to get more elementary and middle school teachers into the uh, organization. Um, we have monthly dinner meetings at the Fountain Blue Restaurant, uh, Banquet Hall in Des Plaines, where we have a speaker. Half the time it's a nationally known speaker outside of the area that comes in. Um, the other half it's a nationally known speaker inside the Chicago area. Uh, we also put on a yearly conference of workshops at the, the end of January or early February. Um, and that is a bar to basement price of only like $25 or $30. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, for teachers, so advance notice to all you teachers at the end of January, early February next year, and you'll be doing the workshops. So yes, it is a very big honor. It is, I am actually starting my year as president-elect this year. Next March, I will be president-elect. So one year as president-elect, one year as president, and one year as past president. We're proud of you, Pat. Congratulations. Congratulations. Mr. Danny, come on up. So a couple years ago, um, I learned, uh, Jessica and I learned in an uh, IASBO delegate program for um, directors of grounds and supervision. So I went to Mike and I said, hey Mike, what do you think about going back to school? And he said, me? <laughs> um, so Mike, Mike's going to tell us a little bit about his program. So where was Mike? Illinois IASBO Facility Management Designation Program. I received training in a wide variety of topics that were introduced to me an array of resources, uh, materials that would help me oversee the school facilities even better. As I completed, it involved budget and financial projections, custodial operations, maintenance operations, environmental health and safety, education and facility design, Renovation, construction, security, and emergency preparedness management, public relations and internal communications, building systems, HVAC, electrical and technology, ground care planning and playgrounds, energy savings, sustainability, recycling, green. The seminars help me gain insight and imagine facilities with a wide range of resources, innovations, and I was with other people who going through the same thing, allowing me to contact and other people who are facing the same challenges as me. So. We're so proud of you. Yeah. Okay, action. Destruction of uh, closed session tapes over 18 months old. I'd like to entertain a motion at the Board of Education to approve the destruction of closed session tapes over 18 months old, October 2011 through October Approve the Kennedy School Work Replacement Bid with Knickerbocker Roofing and Paving Company Incorporated as presented. I move. Great. A second. Any questions? We 
did respond to that um, email and gave you the report that was provided to us from STR. This particular roof that we're replacing is the oldest roof in the school district, uh, 20 plus years old, correct Mike? Yes. Um, it's also, uh, what is it, pit and uh, tar and gravel. Tar and gravel. Um, so when this roof gets replaced, it'll be the same material as the other roofs in the district. The roof is failing. We've been advised by several different um, roofing specialists to uh, replace the roof that we were on borrowed time. So uh, Jeremy made sure he included that uh, in our budget when we crafted the budget. And uh, the money was set aside to, to replace the roof. So to answer your question, um, it wouldn't be appropriate to repair the roof at this time. The roof does need to be replaced. Any other questions? Chura? Yes. Sucky's absent. Bounds? Yes. Kawanio, yes. Flanagan? Yes. Kashuski? Yes. Kowalski? Yes. Personnel. I would like to entertain a motion that the Board of Education approve the hiring of the following certified staff for the 2014-15 school year. Rosanna Agahana, multi-age teacher at Kennedy School. Heather Longo, first grade teacher at Kennedy School. Second. Any questions? Oh, please. Mr. Churro? Yes. The section is in the pounds. Yes. Polanio? Yes. Flanagan? Yes. Gadaszewski? Yes. Kowalski? Yes. Motion passed. Motion passed. Approved uh, certified long-term replacement hire. I would like to entertain a motion the Board of Education approve the hiring of certified long-term replacement Stephanie Newman, social worker at Kennedy School, effective August 11, 2014 through <coughs> December 19, 2014. I'll make a motion today. I'll second. Any questions? Call the roll, please. Stachura? Yes. Downs? Yes. Alani? Yes. Flanagan? Yes. Gadaszewski? Yes. Kowalski? Yes. I'd like to entertain a motion that the Board of Education accept the resignations of the following certified staff. Molly Cotaro, Cotaro, third grade teacher at Kennedy School, effective at the end of the 2013-14 school term. Ms. Kim, uh, Kim Klein, Director of Special Education, effective June 30th, 2014. Jamie Bolongin, psychologist, Kennedy School, effective the end of 2013-14 school term. Nicole Rand, uh, psychologist, Lincoln Middle School, effective the end of the 2013-14 school year. Lori Eggendine, psychologist, Washington School, effective the end of the 2013-14 school year. <coughs> and Christian Wazuski. Speech language pathologist at Washington and Lincoln Middle School effective the end of the 2013-14 school year. Any questions? So sad. All of our best Any motions? I'll make a motion. Second. Call roll, please. <coughs> yes. I'd like to vote no. Um, it's going to be devastating for our district to lose all these great teachers in a program that was doing so well and took so long to get where we are. I, I just think this is, it's terrible. It's devastating.
in a symbolic gesture. Certified stand. I'd like to entertain a motion at the Board of Education to approve the parental leave of the following certified staff. Sarah Mix, a kindergarten teacher at Kennedy School, effective December 11, 2014 through January 4, 2015. Nicole Lamp, sixth grade teacher at Lincoln Middle School, effective November 20, 2014 through the end of the 2014-15 school term. I'll make a motion. Any questions? Oh, please. Satura. Yes. Down. Yes. Delano. Yes. Lanyon. Yes. Kaczowski. Yes. Kowalski. Yes. Motion passed. Uh, approval of educational leave of absence of classified staff. I would like to entertain a motion that the Board of Education approve the educational leave of Rosario Bazano. Paraprofessional at Kennedy School, effective August 11, 2014 through November 17, 2014. Got a motion? Second. Any questions? Hello. Yes. Downs? Yes. Lion? Yes. Lion? Yes. 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 Uh, approval of leave of absence for classified staff. I'd like to entertain a motion that the Board of Education approve the leave of absence for Deanna Mueller, uh, 0.5 full time employee physical therapist from August 11, 2014 to November 3rd, 2014. Dina? Second. Second. Any questions? On the roll, please. Mr. Yes. 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 Executive session. I would like to entertain a motion at the Board of Education to adjourn to executive session at 843 p.m. to discuss the appointment, employment, compensation, discipline, performance, or dismissal of specific employees of the public body or legal counsel for the public body, including hearing testimony on a complaint lodged against an employee of the public body or against the legal counsel for the public body to determine its validity. I'll second. Yes. No questions, comments, or concerns? Are there, are there, is there a spot for questions, there comments, or concerns? I would move that we strike executive session from this week, this month's meeting because we do not have a full board and I am not prepared or comfortable discussing anything in the second session without the full board in attendance. I would agree to that. I mean, the board member that's not here had requested that we have a special meeting, change it to next week, and she was denied that. So obviously she has concerns about things that we're going to discuss. So, until next month, we can do that. So, motion second? Yes, yeah, second. I would second the motion. It was the June board meeting. I was remiss since this came up right now. The board, uh, Mary Ann II did ask me to explain that she had an important personal event this evening, which is why she wasn't here. She knew this was an important meeting, so she extends her apologies. I have a question. Is it appropriate to ask you now? There are other items besides what I believe you're alluding to in the, for the discussion that Maybe you could handle it before. I just don't feel comfortable without people working here. Do you know what that is? Yeah. Okay. 
no algorithms that we're supposed to discuss? Um, no, they aren't shared in the board packet. But I did ask. Yes. What? You yes, what? I asked what we were going to be discussing, so the superintendent shared with me one item that I think would be in the best interest of someone else if we could discuss that. I don't think it would matter if that's discussed now or if that's discussed in June. Okay. But I know what you're referring to. Thank you. Okay. Okay, so the motion on the floor is that we're going to stray going into executive session um, due to the full board not being present. Okay, Mr. Chura? No. Entertain a motion. The Board of Education adjourn the regular board meeting on May 21st at 849 p.m. I move. Ready?